Out of your belly, out of your shampoo, out of your out of your river, out of your water, out of your out of your belly, out of your shampoo, out of your out of your river, out of your out of your water, your help me sleep, out of your belly, out of your shampoo, out of your out of your river. Welcome to the Men of Integrity, Men That Rescue Men and Women. And we are delighted that you've joined us again for a journey through the Word of God. How great and how marvelous God has been. And I know that you're experiencing the wonderful power, the wonderful love and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to appeal to you again that you would sow a seed of faith to the KPLE TV station where we can continue to take the gospel to places that would not ordinarily receive it those that are less fortunate than you and I, those that are incarcerated in the hospital, mental institutions that are waiting to hear a life-changing Word of God. I have with me co-host Apostle J. Edward Fisher from the Saint Center in Coppers Cove. God bless and you. we are yes, looking sir. forward to getting into this Word. <laughs> All right. We want to talk to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 to 11. I want to read for you the NIV version. It says, anyone you forgive I also forgive, and what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his devices. I want to throw a little topic out there today, Apostle, and say to the people of God, stop being the devil's toy. All right. Okay. Many people are struggling with what God has already said. He that is just and faithful to acts, mm -hmm. I am just and faithful to forgive. Mm -hmm. So the enemy keeps a lot of people in this state of condemnation, in this state of unforgiveness, in this state of unworthiness. And so he deals with them like a yo-yo, rather than accepting forgiveness by faith they are still wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in this bondage, which is hindering them from receiving the promises and the salvation of God. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, God is a fake God. And uh, anything that affects our fate uh, is going to keep us from receiving from God. So we have to believe his word. If he says he has forgiven us, then we have to believe that and go on. Uh, any any um, step down from that, it's going to hinder us from receiving it because it's going to condemn us um, self-condemnation. See, not right. God condemnation, but self-condemnation. And um, without faith, it's impossible to please him. That's right. The truth is that you're blessed and chosen by God. And he has promised that you would be the head mm -hmm. and not the tail. All right. But we have to come to the place where we are in pursuit of being the head and not the tail. All right. I like that. It's one thing to just declare something but not in pursuit of it. That's right. So in order to get in the pursuit of something, you have to be conditioned mentally and physically in order to pursue, prevail, and press through in order to get to where God wants you to be at. Let's talk about that for a moment. Okay, yes. Uh, well, you know, we got to continue to move forward with God mm -hmm. uh, and stay with God um, and follow hard after God. I'm, I'm thinking about um, the uh, prophet uh, Elijah and Elisha. Yes. And how Elisha stayed with him. Yes. He wanted something from uh, Elijah. And uh, he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't. He wouldn't even allow Elijah to deter him. And so we've got to be that determined when we're yes. following after God. Paul says in the twelfth chapter of Romans, he says, "Be not conformed to this world, mm -hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind." Mm -hmm. When we get into that Word of God mm -hmm. and our mind is renewed, what I'm beginning to hear and see is that saints are repenting they're being baptized, and some are even receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But the renewing of their mind with the Word of God seems to be a, a problematic area. Mm -hmm. Because though I'm receiving salvation, I'm still battling with the fact that 
God has not really forgiven me for some of the terrible things that I've done, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, some of the issues of life that I'm still struggling with, I still feel God holding me accountable. So when you look at being in pursuit of God, you cannot continue to be distracted, okay? Because distractions set you up to be robbed by God. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, you know, the thing about it is that if you have received salvation, then you must believe that God, that you are a new creature created in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. That old person that did all of those things, he's dead. Yes. You know, we died with Christ and now we are alive with Christ. And, and, and we have to think like that because you're right. If we keep thinking the old way, even though we've come into the Lord, it's going to hinder us. Uh, uh, it's going to be almost like we never gotten saved. So, so we have to understand the principles of salvation that if you're saved, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, old things are passed away and all things are becoming new. You can't be distracted and, and, and because distractions set you up to be robbed by God. Mm -hmm. And John 10 and 10 says, the thief come but to kill, steal, and destroy but I come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide whether you're going to focus on the thief or whether you're going to focus on the abundance of life. Right, right. Well, you know, I mean, um, and, and, and uh, again, uh, when we look at that, he said, I've come mm -hmm. that you might have life. Yeah. So that's got to make you think about where you come from and where you're going. Yes. And, 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 and here's the thing, you need to be pursuing the life that Jesus came to bring. Yes. That's gonna be different from, that's gonna be different from where you come from. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's gonna be a clear as night and day. You're thinking uh, how you thought before and how you think now, you're gonna have to change the way you think if you're gonna, if you're gonna have that life and then have it more abundantly that Jesus came to bring. Absolutely. You know. God wants to bless you beyond your imagination. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. But if they're only yeah. mere words or mm -hmm. statements, but it's not something that you are focused on and locked into, then the enemy plays with you like a toy. Mm -hmm. okay? Unfortunately, many people have been victimized. Okay. They've been violated. They've been burglarized. They've been robbed of something that God gave them. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about tonight, what has God given you and the place that God has taken you and now the enemy makes you feel inadequate. He makes you feel that you don't have, that you're not in position and that you're not where God planted you mm -hmm. because he's toying with you like a yo-yo. Okay, today you're flowing in the joy of the Lord. The next day you're in despair and, and don't know what to do. God gave us certain things and the devil has sneaked up on the people of God, plotted on them mm -hmm. and has come early in the morning and stole something from them. Well, he's a thief, yeah. you see, and, uh, and he's a deceiver. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we don't stay with God, uh, he's going to rob us of the blessings of God, um, uh, just like he did with Eve, you know, Eve. I mean, she had no competition. I mean, uh, she couldn't see the goodness of God because the enemy deceived her into thinking that God was holding something back from her. Yeah. In a sense, he was holding something back from her, death and destruction. Yes, that's powerful because a lot of time people are now thinking that they're being held back from something. Okay. When they Good. really have not reached the level of maturity to move into the next things of God. That's right. And the deceiver, the devil, always <laughs> wants to make us think that there is more that we should have at this juncture in life mm -hmm. when we have not really prepared ourselves spiritually, okay, physically, and even financially to have yeah. some of the things that we desire. But God is not holding anything back no, from he's us. Not. He's not. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, you could comment on this, he says, no good thing will I withhold from That's you right. if you walk upright before me. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are you walking upright in order to obtain the things of God? Yeah, right. Let me drop this and then I'll give you a chance to stay. Okay. You know, you might have faith to receive this, 
but has your faith grown enough to receive that? Mm -hmm. And so therefore you in the between the middle of what you think you should have and what God has already given you and your faith won't take you any farther. Right. Well, you know, I mean, it's growth, it's pr progression. We have to grow. I mean, anything that pops up overnight doesn't have a lot of depth. You yes, know, sir. you understand? And so sometimes we're like that if we ever get into things like that. That's why we don't last all the time. You got to last in this, yes. this fate life. Yes. The Bible says, he that endure it till the end. Yes. You know, some people have started and fast and they've grown up, but they don't have any depth and the winds are going to blow. Jesus said the winds and the rains and the storms are going to come. Yes. Now, whether you're ready for it or not, they're going to come. And if you're not grounded, you're not rooted uh, in God, you don't have depth in God, you're not ready for that, it's going to be a great fall and maybe a great ruin in your life. Yes. I remind the scripture says, be not tossed to and fro with every wind of there doctrine. You go. There you in go. other words, you cannot be moved by everything you see, mm -hmm. hear, or feel. You have to stay stuck and locked in and saturated mm -hmm. in the Word of God. There you go. Okay? There you go. Jesus spent 25% of his ministry casting out spirits and demons. 75 times in the synoptic gospel, Jesus cast out evil spirits and ordinary people, uh -huh. okay? Satan is the ultimate deceiver. He plays on our weakness, he tempts us, and he ensnares us. That's right. And we have to become strong enough to not be the toy of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you read the scripture uh, we, we, we can't be ignorant of his devices, yes. you see? And that's what he gets. He's a deceiver and he's a liar. And if we don't stick to this word of God, well, I say, he's going to deceive us. He'll deceive the best of us. Yes. Uh, and, um, and of course, um, his whole idea is destruction. Yes. And he's trying to get us on the timing with God. Mm -hmm. He wants us to operate independent from God. Yes. Wow. But we got to look at Jesus, right? And the Bible says, consider Jesus. Yes. Consider his life. You know, uh, Jesus didn't start his ministry until he was 30. Yes. Man, today... Uh, we get any kind of glyphs that we're calling, we're ready to run and run a revival mm -hmm. and every, and we're not ready for that stuff. So, right. so we got to be careful that we got to stay put. We got to have patience In patience. We possess our soul wow. uh, and we got to keep looking to the Lord and staying in step with the Lord. You know, you said something I believe that's very powerful and mm -hmm. that is staying in tune and in God's timing. There you go. You know, because the race isn't given to the swift, nor right, to man. the strong, mm -hmm. but he that endured until the end. That's right. That's a very powerful thing. He plays with our mind. Mm -hmm. okay? he, 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 he deals with us in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, mm -hmm. because the evil God of this age has blinded the mind of the unbeliever. There you go. Satan's real strategy is that he wants to keep us in some type of turmoil. Okay. He, he starts the attack in your mind. Mm -hmm. His primary means of beginning is destructions, and few Christians realize that he's attacking you mentally, that you are behind in some things and, and that you should have more and, and that God has forgotten about you and mm -hmm. that God doesn't love you and he's putting all of these things in your head and there is not enough word in our heart okay, to challenge the things that's coming into our head. All right, and all right. so the enemy is just has us all over the place and God wants us to have some stability in him. Mm -hmm. Well you know uh, in the uh, uh, 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, it was yes. telling us how that we got to cast down every imagination, yes, every sir. high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If something comes into our mind and says God don't love us, well, we can look back at Calvary. Yes, sir. See what I'm saying? We can cast that down. I mean, it doesn't make any difference how you feel. Watch this here. God has already demonstrated his love. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we, we, we get into the feeling in the flesh and we want to think it's just a, a feeling, but it's more than a feeling. Yes. And so we got to believe God's word and cast down these imaginations that the enemy is bringing to our mind to get us out of timing and to get us to act independent from God. He tried that with Jesus. Yes. You know, yes. he said, hey, you, you know, you've been fasting for 40 days. 
turn these stones to bread. You know, break your own fast. Mm -hmm. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? And Jesus comes back and said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He said, I'm standing with the word. You know, acting independently from God, mm -hmm. that's a powerful statement. Yeah. Because it now brings us to the thought of what we're doing and how we're doing it is it the will of God? There you go. Okay. Or is it something that I desire? Is it something that I want? Is mm -hmm. it something that I think that God has for me when God has never spoken? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the Bible says that there are many that are prophesying, but I've never spoken it. Okay. <laughs> and so when we look around and we don't see yeah. God backing it up, mm -hmm. it's because he never sanctioned it. Yeah. Okay. And so right. we created a lot of thoughts in our mind and the enemy has put a lot of things in our mind. Now, in that particular uh, chapter that you talked about in 2 Corinthians 10, mm -hmm. verse 5 talks about demolishing arguments and pretense. All right. Okay. Casting down imagination. Mm -hmm. Now, Satan whispers a thought and we reason it out in our mind until it becomes acceptable to think that we are less than victorious. Right, right. And you see, when it comes into our mind, instead of us trying to reason it out, we need to look at the Word of God and yeah. see how it compares with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. That's where our mind needs to go. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But no, we, uh, 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 and sometimes we have that, that vainness in us, right? Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, 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 and we're not that good. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the Word of God is so powerful, and a lack of the Word of God makes go. us so weak to the things of the world. There you go. And to the devices of the enemy. All right. If we do not grasp the Word of God, then the enemy will use us like a dirty rag. Okay? And he starts dealing with us upstairs in our mind. We succumb to the pity of not having. Mm -hmm. The enemy's primary approach is to drop a thought in your mind. He wants us to accept it, and then he wants us to act upon that thought. Yeah. And the danger of that once we do, that that thought becomes a stronghold. That's right. And it keeps us from receiving the truth. Right. You know, I was thinking about John the Baptist, right? You know, they, they, it, that was the enemy working through the people. He said, look, a man, he said, everybody's going to Jesus' baptism. Yes. He said, man, they're leaving you. Mm -hmm. But John had the right attitude. Yes. And John said, uh, he must increase, I must decrease. Yes. We got to have the right mm. attitude. You know, if, if, if this is what God is doing, then God knows what he's doing. Yes. And it's all right with me. Yes. See what I'm saying? Yeah, that's another powerful statement of how much decrease is in your life or are you trying to increase? <laughs> <laughs> and, and when you stop and look at it, mm -hmm. the enemy is using a lot of people like a toy to oh, try yeah. to make them increase that they're looking like they're the almighty one. But when you look in the scripture, the more God increased, the vessel decreased. Hey, all right, all right, right, I like that. Because he wants to be seen, mm -hmm. not us. There he wants to be heard, right. and not us. And if God's not talking, I don't want to be talking either. Now, 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 that, I, you got to be just like Moses. Moses said, he said, God said, I'm going to send my angel, which he said, oh, say, oh no. He said, if you don't go, I don't want to go. That's right. I don't want to go. You know, we got to come to that thing that if God is not doing it, I don't want to do it. And no matter how prosper it looks, yes. if God is not doing it, I don't want to do it. It's not for me. The second thing that the enemy toys with is he plays with your emotions. Uh -huh. And your emotions are valuable. They are the part of the way God created us. But we should control our emotions and not be ruled by our emotions. That's right. The enemy tells you that you're rejected without hope or resources. Mm -hmm. He wants you to feel unworthy to be loved. Mm -hmm. He wants you to feel like everyone is against you. Mm -hmm. He wants you to feel like you've been dealt a bad hand in life. He wants to re rob you of your joy. That's right. Apostle, I've never seen so many people that confess to be people of God that are so discontent. Mm, mm, mm. And you know, that's, a, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's the thing. Uh, I, I, I heard this almost like a, like a little joke. 
uh, the enemy was having a rummage sale and uh, he was selling fear and he was selling uh, uh, lying and everything, but he had on the back of his shelf discouragement. And somebody said, well, I'd like to buy that. He said, oh, no, I can't sell this one. He said, because if I can't get the saints to fear, if I can't get the saints to lie, I can get the saints to be discouraged. Wow. And that's powerful because mm -hmm. when you become discouraged, there you, go. you almost become paralyzed. There you go. There you go. You can't hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. You're not hearing the voice of your leader. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're not in a mind to worship, praise, nor pray. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. You, you, your joy, uh, your joy is slipping away. Uh, um, uh, uh, you, you, the only thing you're thinking about is how much you've been injured. Oh my, that's right. You see, and 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 that's real pain there. Yeah. It may not be physical pain, but it's real. That emotion you talked about the emotion, the emotions of uh, feeling that pain because you're dis discouraged. Now you know he told Joshua when Joshua was taken over from Moses, he said, "Now he said, be strong." and very courageous. Mm -hmm. Don't be discouraged, be very courageous. Mm -hmm. yes. See, because if you be discouraged, it's gonna stop you. No, no. I pray tonight that you're not in a state of discouragement or mm -hmm. despair, mm -hmm. but you are able to stop the enemy from playing with your mind and your emotions by putting into place the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 and 28 says to you, and we know that all, right. all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them that have been called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to look at people and say, this don't look good. That's right. But it's going to bless me. It's going to bless you. Because the word of God says that this is going to work out for my good. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got to learn how to quiet your soul. Okay. This is not always easy, but the scripture says that we need to learn to do it with God helps in Psalms 131 and 2. Okay. Yeah. Faith has to be in action. How important is the faith, Pastor? Oh, man, uh, your, your faith is your victory. Yeah. And without your faith, there's no victory. Without your faith, God can't move. Without your faith, you're pro you can't get into the promises, you know. I mean, faith, he told us the just shall live by faith. Yes. So our justification is built on our faith. Mm -hmm. uh, justification is meaning that uh, you've been made righteous. So you, we don't want to lose our righteousness yes. because if we lose that, we'll be naked before God. So faith, I mean, we can't say enough about faith. Paul says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. That's right. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You have got to know when to praise and not get angry. Mm -hmm. You got to know when to pray and not get frustrated. That's right. You got to know when to worship and not worry. Mm -hmm. You got to know when to trust and not trip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can't let the enemy play with your emotions. If you're going to believe, you got to believe regardless of the situation. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the circumstances, you got to know that you are God's man, God's woman, God's child. Mm -hmm. And you have to focus and be in pursuit of being the head and not the tail. Yeah. Well, I got a scripture for them. Um, be still. Yes. And know that God is God. Yes. Be, just be still. You understand? When everything looks like it's going all kind of crazy and everything, that's the time to be quiet. Yes. Because in your quietness, you're going to find confidence. And in your quietness, you may hear that still small voice. Yes. Yeah. Jesus has conquered Satan for us. That's right. right. He has given us the authority to demonstrate that the devil is defeated in our lives. All right. Okay? I like that. And, and if you are letting the enemy play with your mind and your emotions, then you're not demonstrating the fact that he is defeated. Your children, your spouse, your friends, your co-workers need to know that the enemy is defeated in your life. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. How you behave in a crisis and what you say in a crisis determines whether or not the enemy is defeated or whether he's ruling mm -hmm. in your life. That's right. And you know, the way you act is going to tell me what you really believe. I hear you talking. My Lord. But I want to see what you're doing. Yes. Because what you do is going to tell me really 
what you believe. And it's going to tell the enemy too. Yes. And it's going to, uh, and, and God already knows what you believe. Yes. But you're going to have to act that thing out. That's powerful because Luke 10 and 19 says, I've given you authority to overcome all the powers of the enemy. That's right. Do you believe that you have the authority to call those things that are not as though they were? Do you mm -hmm. believe you have the authority to cast down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God? I wonder, do they believe that they can lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover? That's right. You that's know? right. Well, that's what he said. And, and that, that word of God, it cannot lie. But yes. again, like you say, we have to believe that. We got to believe that when we resist the devil, he's not going to walk away. He's going to run away. Yes. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's very powerful. First Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, All right. unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for you know as much as your labor is not in vain. Don't mm -hmm. let him play with your mind. That's right. Galatians 6 and 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, uh -huh. for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. You have got to get in pursuit of the things of God. Okay. You have got to become a servant of God. Do you serve in your church? Do you worship? Do you pray? Do you serve the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart and your mind? Mm -hmm. Psalms 126 and 5 says, though we sow with tears, we shall reap with joy. Right. Let me give you one more and let you get in on this. Okay. James 1 and 2 says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Right. You know, uh, what the Lord is saying here that, oh yeah, it may be, uh, your trials may be heavy, but the end of it it's going to be joy. Yes. See what I'm saying? Yes. Paul said, uh, the end of my trial is going to be experience. Yes. James comes back and say, the end of my trial is going to be that I'm going to be perfect and I'm not going to be lacking anything. Yes. But there is a period where we, we go through. But, but, but he tells us up front, I like this about our faith. He tells us we got the victory already. Yes. We're not trying to get the victory. Yes. Watch this wow. here. Uh, just like a fight. Watch this here. If we know we don't want to fight, we just got to show up. That's absolutely powerful. Mm -hmm. I want you to meditate on this as we leave you tonight. First Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen generation. All right. I don't care what's going on in your life, but ye are a chosen generation, mm -hmm. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. That's right. I pray that you stop being the toy of the devil, that you find a place of worship. John Apostle Fisher at Saint Center in Coppers Cove. Mm -hmm. Meet me at the Rivers of Living Waters Ministry where every service is a life-changing experience. Don't forget to sow the seed of faith so that God can bless you, press down, shaken together, and running over. The address is on the screen. This is Bishop Shaw. And we are praying for your miracle. How do you bear?